Uh, welcome, everybody. This is the City Council Select Committee to study barriers to serving on city boards and commission. Today is February 28th, and um, we're going to start for calling the meeting to order. Laura, can we start with the roll call? Sure. Um, Javier. Here. Cynthia. Here. Garrett. Here. Jamila. Here. And Gwen. Here. Excellent. So this uh, meeting, it's being recorded uh, over Zoom. Uh, we're able to make this meeting over Zoom because of exceptions uh, initiated by the former governor and carry out to this new administration by Governor Healy. So we can meet remotely. This is being recorded and it's gonna, it's available on for requests or people who wanna watch it later on during the week. Um, we usually were pretty consistent through the, uh, the existence of this select committee. And we have always allocated the first 15 minutes, one five minutes uh, of the, at the beginning of the meeting, just in case our community members, people who want to, to talk to us, it's uh, the format of the public speaking is we listen, we do not answer comments, we do not answer questions during public comment, we just listen, which I think is a really good exercise for us. And we had had previously Megan Pike, uh, chair of the Human Rights Commission, we have other people also coming. So if somebody's watching this later on as a recording, this select committee meets the second and the fourth Tuesday of every month. And our charge uh, goes all the way to a April 15. Um, so if, if you're interested to uh, do public speaking in our meeting, uh, second and fourth Tuesday of every month from 7.30, the meeting it runs from 7.30 to nine, the public comment period is from 7.30 to 7.45. Uh, depending on the amount of people is probably two to three minutes per person. Um, and seeing nobody so far on to here for public comment, we're gonna move to the next uh, agenda item, which is approval of minutes. Um, I don't remember seeing it. Is no, that correct? unfortunately they were not distributed yet? Okay, that's absolutely fine. Um, can we do a roll call? I would like to table the minutes from uh, February fourteenth, and. Probably we're gonna have to work in our next meeting two more weeks. We're gonna have to approve the minutes from February 14th and February 28th. Uh, anybody seconding that motion? Second. Excellent. Uh, Laura, can you do roll call? Javier. Yes. Cynthia. Uh, yes. Garrett. Yes. Jamila. Yes. And Gwen. Yes. Excellent. Thank you so much, Laura. We're going to keep moving down our agenda. Um, so we're going to shuffle around, but before going into the general discussion items, I want to announce that uh, one of our members, Susan McDonald Blanes, is stepping down due to personal reasons from the committee. We are uh, extremely grateful of the work that she has done, that the insights that she has brought to every, every conversation, every meeting and the work that she has done uh, so far in this. Uh, and we're appreciative of, of that. Um, so we're gonna move to the general survey update. Uh, every member, um, and I send the, the updated version of this, uh, not version, but ad the updated results of the survey. Today afternoon uh, was no need for the members to take a look because that's gonna be the core of this meeting. We're gonna keep doing what we did last meeting, which last meeting went through the demographic section. And just to give context to, to community members, the, how, the way how we're doing it, we are uh, taking data points and we are not seeing data points isolated. We're seeing data points as a collective. We are interconnecting the data points to try to sort of to get a big picture of what the service telling us, including uh, who is filling out the survey. And now in this meeting, probably the next meeting, we're gonna go through uh, the meat of the survey, the answers. 
Um, I have to say that thanks to the second uh, outreach that Laura has done. Thank you so much, Laura, for that. Uh, the participation increased in 20%. So we went from around 105, 110 to 145, which is it's really good. Um, I think that uh, it's, it's viable that we still have around, I would say, uh, a little more than 400 emails went out and we're, you know, we are we surpassed the quarter uh, of, of the total of emails going around, going out. So I think this is a really, really good rate. Um, and I'm gonna start sharing my screen. Each member has a copy of this updated service. So my screen is gonna show a lot of, a lot of the survey in tiny letters because that's the format. Members, feel free to open in your computers the, the file that you have. So we can, uh, ooh, um, Laura, can I get host uh, level thingy? I can share my. There you go. So I'm gonna share my screen. Um, let me see. I'm going to select the survey. Excellent. Um, excellent. So I'm going to. Excellent. So here we are in Coltrix. Um, we go back. I'm going to set up sign into it again because I was working earlier today. Um, We're gonna see the results. Excellent. So we're gonna we're gonna start seeing sort of uh, the we we're jumping from the demographic into sort of the meat of the of the survey, um, and we're gonna go sort of we're gonna cluster first the first five questions, and we're gonna talk a little bit about that. So question number one, what we were asking was the involvement with City of Northampton Boards and Commissions. We have to remember that the survey went out to chairs, vice chairs, uh, serving members, and former members, right? People who served before. Uh, we are getting around uh, 40, a, a little more, sort of a little close to 48% of people serving actually that went out, uh, fill out the survey. Um, currently, vice chair and chair, 20%. 20 and people who have applied but was not appointed, it's it's thirty one point seventy two, which is a really high number. We're talking about forty six people that have filled out the, the survey. Um, applying, how did you find out about the vacancy on the board in which you serve or apply to serve? Um, if we take a look to the percentages here, it started getting interesting, right? 10% uh, says that they were contacted directly by the mayor. Um, someone else told them, known an elected official is 19%. Other, 19%. My city councilor or another elected appointed official told me about it, 16%. I read about the opening via social media, social print radio newsletter, 15%. And I read about the opening on city of Northampton website, almost 20%. Wow. It's it's really high, yeah. I, I <laughs> it's extremely high and, and surprising. The I read about the opening on the city of Northampton website, right? Hmm. Um, and I'm gonna I'm gonna take a look to. Uh, um, I'm gonna talk a little bit about those two first. Those these two, right? And one of the things that I was I was sort of seeing on this is between uh, the mayor contacted me about the vacancy and my city councilor or another official told me about it, that's roughly 30%, right? 26%. Uh, 20, um, and one of the things that, and, and I think this reflects a lot in what we were talking before, right? Um, one of the things that we really wanna see higher 
in percentage are those um, uh, channels of communication that is not necessarily about if you know a city councilor of if you know the mayor to be able to serve. So one of the things that I would like to open, and I think Gary, this plays really well with you know you, most of the, most of the some of the concept that you have given is about outreach and how that outreach is being done. And I would like sort of to put on the table, um, and I'm taking notes about this because you know we are building the with Jamila we're building the the report. It's Personally, I do think that we need to potentiate the website, but you know, also we want to um, put, like make higher percentage about the uh, people learning about social media, about the positions, right? Um, I would like to get a point that the data that we see, it's people knowing because you know, they, they learn it because it's everywhere rather than you know knowing somebody um and i would like to hear sort of the, the the insights of the of the members in relation to this how what do you think if you agree if if you know do you think that it's it, the percentage are fine there's not a lot to do there i would love to know that so i'm going to open the floor for the members um when yeah, my initial thought is that um, just by looking at these first two segments here, um, with the mayor, you know, we don't know who the mayor was. Like this, it's there's a large amount of people who um, I think it's like. Um, I can't see it right now. I can look on mine. So the, um, major, the major percentage is 10.12. Yeah, so that's that's a good amount. Um, I guess you'd have to be in proximity. Um, so, you know, I agree with what you're saying, which is that accessibility comes in a number of ways. Um, and it should come in many more ways, like through social media or, you know, putting these positions in a more prominent place on the website. I am a little surprised by the high amount, the high number of people that found it on the website. So um, I'm also interested in, in what motivated them to go to the website. You know, was it something that happened? Was it, I mean, I don't know if we'll ever have all those answers, but um, because we know if somebody went to the website, they definitely had to dig for it to find it. Um, and so there must have been some, any number of motivating reasons. So that's just, you know, it's neither here nor there. I'm not coming to any judgments or conclusions at all. I just wanted to share what I thought about that. Perfect. Thank you so much, Wen. And and I, I would invite the, the select committee to I would say, please do not see this conversation um, disconnected from our last meeting. Remember, we talk about deeply about who is filling out this survey. We saw the demographics. We we saw sort of the the, uh, the sort of the, the the what kind of people fill out the survey. And I think that having those data points that were around ten or twelve. Um, informing and also uh, sort of uh, contextualizing what we're seeing now, which is the, 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 the core of the survey, I think is really useful. What I would say is, based in our conversation before, we do have sort of a high percentage of upper middle class people with access to, you know, to high income with access to, you know, to computers, to, on, uh, you know, probably savvy online mm -hmm. right I, I i would say that but i i would like to hear more about from from the other members cynthia well i think it's um we have to just remember these are people that have already crossed a, went through a couple of hoops because they're on commissions and boards 
And so in order to fill out an application, I think you've got to be able to, to do what they say they're doing, going through the website, I think. I mean, I think you could go to City Hall and you could probably get one too. Um, I'm not sure, too sure about that. We should probably research that. But um, the big unknown for us with our survey is the people who um, are not on boards and commissions that kind of maybe would be interested. Right. But we didn't survey them. So this is going to be a little bit, you know, characteristic of people that kind of got through the first and the second door of the system, so to speak. Um, so they're going to be a little bit more adept, I think, at um, going through the infamous city website. Because um, somebody must have said, could have said, hey, if you're interested in the planning commission, just go to the website and check it out. Mm -hmm. So. So let's just keep remembering that as we do the report. Absolutely. This is wonderful information that we're getting, um, but it's it's not the whole picture. Perfect. Gary. Uh, so I just wanted to also point out kind of dovetailing after Cynthia is that um, looking at the other section, it, it seems just a quick, I just did a quick glance over everyone and it seems about 40%, maybe half of those others also were folks who were looking they're actively searching for an opening which i think um probably falls under that read about the opening in the website so i i just want to say that uh, it is nice that there are a lot of self-motivated folks who are, are looking for these things um but cynthia's right you know we're I, I think part of our task is trying to figure out a way to out to outreach to folks who don't have access or aren't or don't even know that these things exist mm -hmm. perfect yeah, you you two just jump into the next. <laughs> I thought I want to talk next. Yes, so this this is one of the things that, as Gary again, Cinda said, it shows a little bit the limitations of the this this service specifically as as a tool, right? Because it's giving us a a, a clear picture, but a really specific picture, and also because at the same time, you know, that we 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 don't have the ability. To be able to do a, like a like a citywide survey in relationship to accessibility, um, maybe, and I want to sort of throw this to the mix. Um, maybe we want to suggest the city to do uh, uh, a study about accessibility for like citywide, which is something that as a select committee we are not in in, in no position to be able to do it. But the city would be in a better position, having in mind that uh, what we're looking here is that doesn't matter who you know or you don't know, and doesn't really matter what level of accessibility to, you know, technological savvy you are or not, or where you are consuming, you still have a high percentage of possibility to be able to hear of a vacancy, to be able to to hear different ways how to. Uh, you can engage with the city. And I think this the, the, a survey like that would work in so many levels for the city of Northampton. Mm -hmm. uh, Jamila. I wonder um, if the someone else, not an elected official, told me about it. Does that count like neighbor to neighbor? Because I know a lot of people find out from their neighbors about select committee things or their friends, you know, and that is all about who you know. And I think we we need to open up more like social media news and stuff like that to reach out to the people who may not have connections in the city yet, like somebody who just moved here or uh, somebody who's not as connected to city government. Um, but I wonder if, if, that, if that someone else, Oh, not an elected appointed official. Okay, someone else told me about that. I think, I mean, that's 19%, right? That That's a lot. Like, yeah. neighbor to neighbor talking about it. I think that's a big, a big way that people find out about it. So some people that I have talked to they, that uh, volunteered the information that they selected that one, a couple of people have signed the commonality that they are really engaged with their neighborhood association. Uh -huh. mm. I, I, 
I'm, I, I don't want to say that that's a trend, but I, I, what I would say is that the, the few people that I have talked to that had volunteers and information to me about this, it's a lot of the information that they get is through neighborhood uh, association, like people in their ward. Right. I, I'm not even sure how to access or if I have a neighborhood association. Um, I know Ward 3 does. I don't know if every, I think Ward 1 does, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't know how to find that off the top. Yeah, and, and I think this goes back to um, knowing somebody, right? Yeah, um, that's right. Because, you know, when you move into a new community, you don't know anyone. So that's true. Yeah. And I and I have to say though I also a lot of people when they are talking about I learned through an elected official if you take a look some people mention newsletters right because they are elected officials that they I don't know how they do it because I know that the compensation is not near anywhere to the amount of work that you guys do uh, it takes hours to be able to make a newsletter yeah. Uh, so I appreciate all those city council members that are in constant communication with their, you know, their voters, their neighbors. So um, I, I, I think it's, it's, it's one, one of the parts that we're talking about, about accessibility has to be geared towards um, sort of democratizing the access to the information and decentralizing it, right? Mm -hmm. Or sort of the lack of a, of a, of a different way to say it. Excellent. So um, any other comment in relation to this section? And if not, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to move forward. And please, um, Cynthia. I, I just wonder if I could ask Jamila and Garrick, um, because I'm, I'm in more two. And so I have a relationship with my city councilor, Karen Foster, because she does that newsletter thing um, on a regular basis. And so I'm just wondering uh, <laughs> if I were running, or I know you're newly elected, but if I wanted to build a base of potential voters, like what do you all do to reach out to the folks in your um, individual wards? I'm just curious for communication updates. Well, I'll, I'll go. I, go I, I have done a newsletter, but a lot of what I've been doing is is just being a community. I've, I've done a number of sit-ins with North Campus neighbors. Yep. yep. Uh, I've, I've done a couple of Zoom meetings with Hampton Court. And so like individual pockets, I have been spending my time um, Got it. really focusing on, on spaces as opposed to just a wide thing. But I feel everyone has their own thing. And, and I'm still learning where I have space to communicate or, or whatnot. Um, but I've, I've have been making myself as available as possible with the limited time I have. Yeah, and for me as an at-large, I kind of go yeah. to all the different wards, depending on what's happening in each different ward, like I'll get an email or a call from a different counselor about this is happening in this ward, so I'll go to that ward and, and talk to the people there. I just think you, you're ambassadors, and I appreciate what um, Javier is saying about um, time and newsletters and all that stuff. But boy, it would be so good if there was a central place in the city where the counselors could say, OK, here's my stuff to my ward. Uh, this is all the stuff I want to tell them. And then it gets disseminated you know, so that you're not doing that, that legwork. And it's just another way to connect. So just a recommendation. My 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 ward person he he puts out a newsletter as well, yeah, and 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 he usually includes like updates on things that have been going on. Um, you know, we've been in touch about you know just trying to get things organized within my little place where I live. You know, I'd I'd like him to come talk about the ARPA money and what that's all about. You know, like what's going to happen now. You know. Um, and a lot of people in my community don't use a computer, are afraid to use a computer, um, just don't have time to get on the computer or just don't have one. So 
Um, I'm always trying to figure that out. Yeah, sure. Thanks. Sorry. A no, no, it, this, this, no, no, this is not, this is really good. So my work person is exceptionally good communicating. Um, but, you know, I, I'm sort of a member of the, uh, the advisory board to the mayor about compensation of elected officials. And one of the things that I'm taking a look, so I, I took a look to neighboring communities, mainly Holly, Springfield, Greenfield, East Hampton about compensation. And if, if you ask me a month ago, I would say, I do think that the council should put way more time communicating. If you ask me now, <laughs> after a month seeing, I, I, I would say a lot, a, a lot of, most of the time that they are putting, it's so much over time for the little compensation, like tiny compensation. This is not even, I wouldn't, I, I wouldn't even dare to call this part time, right? So, um, and I'm fighting for that. I'm mentioning that kind of stuff in that meeting because I do think that uh, it's important. And I do think that, as Cynthia, you said, and when point out that if we feel that um, our elected officials, they, they play a role into democratizing that access to the information, I also feel that we can state that and say that, you know, that we're cognizant of the, you know, sort of the per diem money, I don't know how to call it anymore. <laughs> uh, and that they should be able to be compensated in a way that they can actually be that be part of the job. Right? Yeah. I mean, again, our charge is not take a look to the budget and say something according to the budget. That's not our charge. Our charge is to give recommendations that we think would be good policy and good practice, right? So mm -hmm. I, I, I think this, this is really on topic. So I, I appreciate it. Gary. I, I just wanted to chime back in and, and say that I, I really think this is an important conversation because I, I personally struggle a lot with where can I best use my time. Um, but I've also been thinking as um, Gwen was saying, you know, there are people who don't use the internet and so newsletters don't work. Um, and I, I've been talking to Council Elkins. She had this idea of office hours back in the day. And then I thought that was really cool where, where, you know, certain days of the week, you know, we could post up in a spot and any citizen who wants to come and hang out and ask a question or just have a coffee or beer with the counselor could be a, a really cool way to start interacting with our citizens and also with each other. You know, kind of the idea Marissa had is she would go, you know, ward to ward and, and, and pick up something. And so um, I, I think that it, it is smart to start looking at ways to think outside the box to communicate with folks because people, everyone has a different way and comfort level with how they interact with the city um, and its employees. Okay. Excellent. Um, before moving away from this section, it's, do we have anybody else who wants to chime in? Mm. Excellent. So I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna share my screen. So we're gonna talk a little bit about the data points in relationship to, um, and hopefully you can follow there about the experience, the level of uh, if people, we, we threw people several different statements um, and we're gonna sort of take a look to the different percentages and how that correlates with other sections of the survey. Um, you know, to the right side of the, of the data, you see a strong agree, to the left side, you strongly disagree, in the middle, neither agree or nor disagree, right? And one of the things that at least caught my attention, it's number four and five. And let me see if I can do sort of a, a four and five. Uh, I knew what to expect throughout the application process. Uh, we have 32% disagreeing and 8% strongly disagreeing about knowing what to expect through the application process. And number five, I knew what the city was looking for in new members of the board. Um, we get almost 40% between disagree and strongly disagree about just two statements. And we have spent a fair amount of time talking about, you know, we had Megan Pike, chair of the Human Rights Commission, coming here saying, I feel I need to create this sort of 
basic guide for people that are thinking about serving or are coming to serving boards because they don't know what to expect. And I think this data point adding what we know, which is and the people fill out this survey are people that are resourceful, that they have the means to be resourceful, they have the time to be resourceful, and they still find that it's extremely unsettling and and and, and confusing about what are the expectation are or what to expect through the, the application process, right? So, and going to what Cynthia uh, mentioned like, uh, uh, at the beginning of the meeting, I, I can make an educated guess about what would happen with that, portion, that population that is not, it's not as, you know, uh, doesn't come with the means and resources that are, you know, the people filling out this, this form have, right? And I think that that sort of speaks to, to the need, certainly about creating a system where, and, and again, I'm stating what I think, but I wanna open the conversation. I do think that chairs and vice chairs, when there is an opening in their committees, have to be consulted because they know about the workload, they know about the attendance requirements and how much they, you know, how often, and, you know, and, and if there is any, any sort of homework for members to do, right? Um, and I, at least for me, these two that points together, plus the demographics that we were talking last meeting, points strongly that we need more clarity. And we need to create a sense of, and I think, Eric, you mentioned a couple of meetings ago, people being able to get an email, automatic email back saying, we got your application. <laughs> you will hear back from us in a week, in two weeks, right? Something as, as autom automated like that to really sort of uh, people feel that they know what they are doing and how they are doing, right? And uh, so I'm gonna open the, sort of the floor for members to comment on this. Uh, Jamila. I'm thinking that maybe if there was a page, like kind of like Megan's handbook, if there was a page where it, la it laid out step-by-step -step what the application process is, and like what the timeline for an application process could be. I think that that could be something that could make the whole process more transparent for people. Um, I don't know what you could put that on the website or on the city website or something that makes it more transparent for people to see, you know, okay, I submit my application at this time, I'll hear by this, you know, couple weeks, I'll get an email I'll, and then such as like each step along the way would be helpful, I think. Absolutely. One thing that comes up, particularly on, on certain types of boards, is that the state has mandates for qualifications for a lot of these positions. Um, you know, like it actually has mandates for training. It's under mass law. Um, you know, that's really, really important um, because, um, you know, if those requirements are there by law, they're they've gone through a process and they're there for a reason. Um, and so, you know, if people are not qualified, who's being harmed, you know? Um, so I guess I have some questions. I would, I, I, I guess what I might get out of this is that maybe, um, maybe there's a screening process that, um, can work better to get qualified people or you know have that training you know a priority and a requirement within a certain amount of time but one thing i keep reading here as well is the speed as you guys are talking about um you know people sometimes will apply at a certain point in their life when they have the time to give um and then by the time they get the call it's too late. They've already 
kind of found in some other position somewhere or are following a new inspiration or, you know, whatever was inspiring them to apply at the time um, was, you know, handled in some one way or another or not. Um, yeah, so, and, you know, of course, <laughs> we're kind of sort of like, at least we are getting responses from people who applied but never heard back. And those are some of the longer summaries that we're reading. Yeah. Um, and I think that's nice, you know, that we left that as a narration. Um, so, you know, um, is it political? Yeah, you know, it can be political, um, you know, um, you know, people choose who they want to vote for and that person comes in and, you know, we're interested in those ideologies, whoever we vote for, people vote for, uh, maybe sometimes that will change. But what happens when it doesn't change? What happens when there's no turnover on a commission or board? When um, I was just thinking about this last night, it's kind of like um, sometimes you, especially in housing, you know, people are voting for progressive representatives, but they're under the thumb of an organization that is the exact opposite of that. So, you know, that kind of um, treatment, uh, you know, could have a huge impact on whether somebody is gonna be willing to serve on a committee or a board because they, that's like almost asking them to serve for free and then, and then whatever good results come out of it, they won't be able to enjoy that because they are isolated from the rest of the city because of um, conservative or authoritative type um, practices. I think when you, you raise the, like a couple of really good points, right? Um, and I, I, I wanna, I want to sort of state the three points that I think we, I, I would like us to sort of to go deeper, right? The first one is, what do we mean when we talk about being qualified to serve, right? And and I do I do feel that we need to be careful with that because you know, right? Do I have any business in the planning board? No, <laughs> because I don't know anything about it, right? Do I have any business on the board of health? No, you don't want somebody like me making you know opinion like policy or opinions or whatever it is right you don't want that but and, and that's the difference between advisory boards or commissions that require a certain level of you know professional expertise versus the vast majority of the other boards that are community oriented and and your life experience, your the world where you live, the community that you surround yourself are are the qualifications, right? So we need and I, and, and I would push back on that one. The other you 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 talk about it's uh, like like minded people ending to filling out the positions. Um. And 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 I think that that's something that we need to be careful. And I was going to mention that because in if you guys have the survey open, uh, you're gonna see that between four, uh, between people serving more than five in less than seven years or more than eight years, it's almost 50% of the people serving right now. Mm -hmm. um, I had been at the ACLU almost six years and I have never been in other position more than six years. So for somebody serving as a volunteer in a committee, in a board, or anything for, you know, for between five to, you know, eight and plus, I, I do think that the, the, there's, a, I would assume, again, this is my opinion, it's, it is, there's a lack of pl plurality uh, that comes with that, right? And I don't know, and and it's not that I'm, I'm saying we should, but maybe we should talk a little bit about term limits for boards, right? right? So we, in that way, we make sure that we had fresh faces. Maybe we want to have a difference between those boards and commissions that need some professional standard for people to to serve versus the one that make the majority of the commissions, which are just 
being a, a resident in the city of Northampton as a qualification. And the third point that you make, and I think is important, is the managing of expectations, right? People getting extremely frustrated for giving their time. And, and if, if, if you read the, the narrative portion of that, people feeling disrespected, mm -hmm. people, people feeling deeply that they were tricked into giving their own time and expertise and being ignored. Mm -hmm. Uh, and I think that's also a, a sort of one of, one of one of sort of the issues that we're seeing across the board, right? And 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 I know I have people from different boards that coming they they have talked to me about that specifically. Um, so I want to sort of I want to open the floor with those three points. The first one, the the one in relationship to you know maybe terms term limits for commissions on boards. The second one, how do you achieve that? It's not the, that the city doesn't create a unification of thinking, that there is diversity of thinking and, and disagreeing is fine. Right. And the other is how do you manage expectation with people going into, into these uh, volunteer community positions thinking that they are going to make a difference and you know hitting reality that these are recommendations that may be taken or not. Gary, I see you almost you, talking. You can always tell when I have something <laughs> to say. I don't, I don't really hide myself well. My bad. <laughs> it's, um, a couple things. First, uh, I don't have this information at hand, but I think we may have talked about it, but I was wondering if someone knew how many open positions on committees and boards there are currently. Does anyone remember that? It was like a hundred and something, but I don't remember exactly. Yes. Uh, and, and the reason why I bring that up is because if we were going to talk about term limits and we're still lacking people, there's some committees who can't even have a meeting because we don't have enough members. Um, and so I think that we should be very aware before we get like, you know, if, if we had this, this issue where people were staying too long uh, and they weren't getting, you know, there's no turnover, I think that for me, then I'd be like, oh, we really should discuss this. But if the situation is we have people sticking around and waiting it out as we're trying to fill positions, I feel like that's a different discussion. And it draws me to looking at the survey when, I think I said this last time, something that really stands out to me is the question, I would consider applying for another board in the future. And overwhelmingly, people say yes. Uh, despite the fact that they felt respected and other things, it, it's clear that 40, what is that, 47% almost of the people agree, another 20% strongly agree, um, whereas only 6% and 9% said they wouldn't. Um, mm. So we wanna keep those people who are obviously self-motivated right. because if we're talking about onboarding, we want people who have done the work to help the new people to come in. Um, so that that would be my my statement on term limits, um, but but I, I I get where you're kind of coming at. Uh, you don't want things to stagnate. Um, I think the expectation thing is is a real issue, but I hope that um, that could be solved by some onboarding. You know, I, I feel like our recommendation is going to be uh, just having kind of a handbook because I think that you know we've talked about this. You know, Jamila and I kind of just are figuring things out as we can. You know, mm -hmm. we both just put out our, our, you know, a resolution and it was with three first time counselors and we, a lot of it was like, <laughs> can we do this? It was great. <laughs> How, yeah. How this work? Um, but I, I really hope that, that the expectations aspect can be handled by, um, you know, maybe each chair really giving a, a truthful uh, assertion of what kind of commitment each of these positions takes and also what kind of effect you know everyone comes in wanting to be the change and <laughs> sometimes change takes time and so you know going back to the term limits you know right if you're really into this stuff it's going to take you you know years like some you know think about our main street redesign you know this is years in, in coming like all these big city things take a while uh, right. not to say that some things don't because as Javier and Cynthia were already on the police review commission. Like we saw that out of that came the Department of Community Care. So right. there, there is a balance, like, but 
but I think expectation is something we should really kind of focus on. Uh, just in, in terms of the uh, term limits, it is tricky, as you said, Garrick, because we need so many people and now we're thinking of term limits. However, I do have to say, um, I'm on the Board of Health, I have a limit. And so they say to me, do you want to re-up? And I say, yes. That's pretty much all I got to do. Oh. Right. <laughs> now, and if if I... If, if that yes meant I had to do a few things, like maybe, I don't know, go back to city services, I don't know, uh, check a box here or there, you know, it, um, it, allows, it allows that not to be automatic, let me just say. Intention. I, I could just keep re-upping on the board forever. I really could, the, the way it's designed. So I don't know, my first question is, are there term limits on any of the other committees? Secondly, um, Gwen, you talked about state qualifications. I'm not sure if you have an example of that. I know on Board of Health, it's not a state qualification. It's just us saying we got to have a doc. We have to have an mm -hmm. MD. That's that's okay. part of our- Oh, I'll I didn't know that. Yeah, I, I'll say it's a charter, but I don't know what it is, quite frankly, because some of the small right. towns, you know, like Asheville, they're just not going sure. to a doc. Um, yeah. But the other thing is, you know, we we had some people in our surveys who um, applied and didn't get anything. Now there's an opportunity, right? I don't know, Javier, what was that number in the 40s or something like that? Uh, 40, 46. So, you know, there's, there's people that were interested. Maybe there could be a mechanism to go back to them and say, hey, you wanted planning, but would you be interested in this? You know, because right. they're... They're kind of low hanging fruit, right? They're interested in something, and the worst thing they can say is no. So I think in that process, in that application process, um, the more fingers and eyes that we have in it, the more opportunities we might have to capture people. I, I think actually someone wrote in in the comment section of what can be improved. They said it would be nice to have like kind of a rotating waiting list of, of so right. we should definitely take. I, I thought. There are a couple things that I really took note that I thought were great um, ideas. Just to go on the term limit thing, I know I know with the housing partnership, it's a three year it's a three year thing. Um, I knew that right away going into it, um, and I like that because of two reasons. One is I know how long I'm going to be serving for and what to expect in terms of duration of commitment, um, and then the other part is that. Um, uh, well, there is no other part. I mean, you know, except for what we're talking about right now. Uh -huh. Jamila? Yeah, I think uh, I think a lot of the boards and commissions do have like term limits because I noticed that when we have city council meetings, they say, you know, from this year to this year and you can't, you know, from what Cynthia said, you can't just say, yes, I want to go ahead and re-up and serve on it for longer. but. I think that you know, with some of the with some of the commissions and committees not being able to have a quorum, that it, term limits seems like it it wouldn't serve the city as well as um, maybe like the waiting list or something like that to bring people on who applied previously and didn't get on a certain board, um, you know. And I think that with um, with the expectations, I think that, I mean, I'm surprised that with people who have been on the board for five to eight plus years, that there's not more onboarding, that there's not more, Same. you know, taking someone's hand and bringing them on and telling them, you know, these are kind of the ropes, this is what goes on. Um, I'm, I'm actually surprised that that doesn't happen more. Um, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I was thinking, I look, Cynthia, about your point. It's a 30, almost 32% of the people filling out the survey are people who were uh, never heard back, right? I mean, there, there, is a, there is a pretty big, I mean, and this is just with 145 people answering the survey, not the 400 people that this went out, which is, you know, people who everybody have submitted an application, right? 
So I, I, I do think that um, what I'm hearing here is that maybe sort of recommending that the city should, you know, they have an untapped source of willing volunteers mm -hmm. that they are willing to allocate their time to be able to serve. So the city should, you know, go back and say, hey, maybe this is not what you wanted, but, you know, if you want to serve the city, this is what would be good, right? Um, right. Also, also, and I'm, I don't know about this, but um, do you, Gary or Jamila, know if the city sends an email or a note to people saying, I'm so sorry that, you, you know, thanks for your application, but you are not being selected this time to serve on X, Y, and Z. It's, is that something or? I wish. I don't think the city does that. I don't think so. Because you would want to know why, you know, like, is it something that I did wrong in my resume? Is it, is it something, um, did I miss the mark and my expectations of what the role is? Um, you know, like, um, yeah, that, that would help a lot. I am uncertain as well if that's a thing, but I don't think that any response should be about a why, just a general, you know, yeah. this time. Yeah. Um, you know. I mean, if I, and I think that one of the things that an email like that may trigger, if I don't, if I, you know, I get an email saying that this time I was not selected, I would, I at least, this is myself, I would go to my city councilor saying, what would you recommend me? To, uh, should I do something different? Uh, do you know about any other position? And I think that that's the kind of stuff that we want to start encouraging. Right. Well, well the, the big elephant in the room is who will do this? And as a note that I, I think I may have brought it last <laughs> time, because uh, someone, someone even brought it up, is that there should be a, an HR person. And, and it's, let's be real. Like, it's, it's, you know, when we're talking about counselors trying to have time to write emails, like, someone's job would have to be to respond to all of these things. Uh, that, that's long and short of it is all I can see is because it is, it's an important enough task um, to, to do it and to update and, and make sure, you know, if we, if we had a rolling list of someone to, to update that list and all that stuff. So um, I, I think that's ultimately what's gonna come down to is problems require money and, and people to handle them. Unless there was a way to automate it. Yeah, same thing. Yeah. a person to <laughs> figure it out. I do think um, our job is to make the recommendation, and um, but but I I do think in order to do diligence and and not being so anecdotal, um, we initially wanted to have this fellow who I don't know works in the mayor's office, Court Klein, and my understanding is that all applications start with Court. Um, yes, and he's a. Um, you know, a staff assistant, I don't, I don't know the titles. And so, it, you know, it might be as we put a mi microscope on that process, we do uh, rethink about having him come. Um, he was he was willing to come, no question about that. There was some, some scheduling issues. He wasn't sure what he could offer, um, but I think that we might need to find out when the ap application comes in, who, where does it go and what happens? No, no judgment yeah. here. Just, just what is it? Yeah. <laughs> and do a, do somewhat of a flow chart of that, so we can pinpoint some of the um, weaknesses in the process or, yeah, or it, rooms, room for improvement. It, I think it also involves Tom. Tom, I want to say Tom Wood, but I don't know if that's the right name. Um, he's. Uh, I don't know. I'm going to look it up and I'll tell you in a minute. Yeah, uh, I think it would be a, a good idea to have court come and talk about the process of the application. And not only for us to, to get an idea of what the process is, but to also see maybe if court has some ideas of ways to kind of streamline things because, you know, he's a great resource. You know, he's, he's been right. in the trenches doing it, so. I, I would, yes, let's do that. Cynthia, would you feel comfortable sort of contacting him again and seeing if we can make our next meeting? I, I feel very comfortable doing it, Javier. I'm, I'm just, um, you know, it, it kind of died. And um, 
I don't know if maybe a little more um, oomph. <laughs> and, and when I say oomph, I mean a Laura or a Javier. <laughs> I don't know. I, it, it, I, but I'm happy to do whatever you all think is the best way to, to get court to come here. Let's do something easier. Okay. Uh, City Council President Nash, I see that you are <laughs> here. Probably eating dinner. <laughs> this is cookies. Ah, he really does listen. He, of course. Um, I'll admit I'm typing emails at the same time, so. <laughs> Full disclosure. Yeah. Jim, would it be possible for you to contact Cor and see if you can come to our next meeting? Uh, who, who, Cord? Or client, yeah. You know, we have to ask the mayor's office and um, sure, I can, Laura and I will reach out to the mayor's office and, and we'll see, um, we'll, we'll see what the response is. Perfect. I mean, basically the mayor's um, is, is, is feisty and protective of her staff and that, um, but that's really what it's about. Although court is very uh, diplomatic and I'm sure he would handle himself very well. But anyway, that's, that's really what Laura and I will work with and see if we could uh, get court to attend. What about, um, Stan mentioned Alan Wolf. Yeah, Alan could also be a, a Alan, Alan is the spokesman for the mayor and a spokesperson for the mayor. And um, I'm sure we could get him, it would be more likely we could get Alan to show up. Okay. I think, Jim, we just don't want to be saying, well, I think the application goes here and I think it goes there. And, you know, our report has all these yes. anecdotes in it. Yeah. So I think we really need to get a picture of that. Yeah. And, well, and you guys had tr set up for court to come in at one point and then there was uh, some sort of issue and you had to cancel. Yeah, we have yeah. technological. Um, Technology. <laughs> so, Speed yeah. bumps, yeah. Yes. So, all right, did, Laura, Laura and I will work on that uh, this week. Right. If you, when's if the you next can, meeting? Uh, the fourteenth. Okay. March fourteenth, right. uh, seven thirty. Um, yeah. If you guys can sort of see if Core would be would be able to come, that would be awesome. Um, sure. Excellent. Excellent. So, anything um, else? Thank you so much for your support. <laughs> thank you so I, much I'm, jim you, you guys are great keep doing what you're doing i'm going to go back to being a member of the public okay <laughs> what does that look like <laughs> it looks like this okay listen <laughs> so um uh time check is 8 30 um i wanna i wanna move to I had been taking notes of, and because we're sort of drafting the the uh, the report. So I wanna I sort of jump into the March 12th listening session um, with two things. The first one, um, I so Cynthia, you share with us the sort of the the communication plan leading to uh, to the T event. I would suggest that if we can move, if everybody's okay with moving the listening session from the 12th to the 19th, and, um, and we can sort of move all the dates in, in, in the plan. In let me show, let me share the, the document that Cynthia created. So this is the document, which is, I think is perfect. Um, if we if we move this to the nineteenth, um, and we and we sort of adjust the dates accordingly, I think we can do it. I I I know that when has the first draft of the for the flyer. Um, so I want to sort of hear thoughts about it, and and we need to sort of come. Maybe it's starting today, we have to do sort of hard commitments and what we're gonna do and how we're gonna do it. Um, so I wanna, Cynthia, do you wanna talk a little bit about this? 
Um, well, I think it's pretty self-explanatory. I, I do think that um, we are at the point where we've got to find out who's going to do what. Um, yeah. And so the um, flyer, um, I, I, I did send along very, very early a sample of a flyer that was used for a listening session, um, city stuff, parking. And it's just like basically all done, you know? Um, but um, I can resend it out, but I think we need to, any, we obviously need to get moving and I appreciate uh, we're gonna have to change the date because <laughs> we missed some deadlines or some of them are tomorrow, <laughs> so yeah. Uh, I just wanna say that in my neighborhood, I know a lot of people are not in touch with our ward counselor. Um, we do have a bulletin board um, that people can look at, although it's kind of blocked by the snow right now but I would be willing to pass flyers out and put them into doorknobs to, to, to try to gain some, that's that's no big deal for me. I can do that. It will get me out of the house, get my brain somewhere outside. Excellent, so let's just start by deciding it's everybody okay with moving the, the, the day from March 12th to March 19th. Yep. Same. Excellent. I think okay. I have a conflict with the 19th. My son actually has a special Olympics basketball tournament. Oh. Um, March 19th, I believe so. It, it would, it, Laura, it would be sort of a listening session. We okay. would, we would, there would not be, the note taking would be sort of the basic that I, I can do it. Uh, okay. If not going to be what you do, which is, you know, the narrative of the tournament, <laughs> because it's going to be people talking okay talking to us so it's going to be pretty much people giving testimony and talking to us i, I mean that would be 99 percent of that event okay so my question necessary what, what we need to work out is uh the ability to start the meeting mm -hmm. Which, that's that's and I, I i will work that with you and jim and that can be done from anywhere and then yeah. someone else assigned as host okay great thank you Excellent. March 19th is a Sunday. Yep, we are okay. doing this in the weekend uh, at 12, right? Originally, yeah. Okay, so we're, good, we're gonna be changing that. And okay. um, Cynthia, can I, can I, and I know you have done a lot with this, can you re relocate all the dates and send it to the group? Yeah, I, I have to send it to Laura. Okay. Uh, uh, right. Or you can send it to the group as long as nobody replies all. I can? Yeah, as long as nobody replies all. Okay. That's fine. So for example, if I had, I'm gonna be sending a study that I that uh, we heard about and I'm gonna send it to everybody. As long as nobody replies all to that, it doesn't create communication. Okay. Um, so basically, uh, bah, 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 bah. You're, you're gonna see seven days added to everything. Yep. But um, I do think we need to figure out who's doing a press release and, you know, yep. we need to and, and, and the graphic. And me, should... and me and Jamila are going to work with the assignments and the assignment. Oh. Is that okay, Jamila? Yeah, that's okay. Excellent. So we, we cut it and we, we start doing it. Um, when I saw the first draft of the flyer, I think it looks good. I'm going um, I'm gonna to share it with the rest and we're going to go ahead, okay? Sure, that's fine. It was just, um, you know, the free version of Canva. I'm still learning how to use it, but that was the best I could find. Good for you. Excellent. Um, Garrick and Jamila, um, when we're talking about the media outlets, I think that in, in the case of, you know, you have 413, uh, the new radio show from Monte Belmonte, um, Gary, can you get in touch with those shows that you think you to want to do a promotion of this, including you know the we're talking about the Bill Newman the Bill Newman show, the Monty Bill Monty, which is the fabulous four one three. Um, so if you can just get a hold of that, that would be great. And me and Jamila, we're gonna tackle, see if we can just write a press release for the Gazette, the Shoe String, uh, and for something that is consoles can just copy paste it and send it out to their uh, list serps and newsletters. And, you Is know, that... we, 
we, we talked at the beginning of this of select committee that one of my expectation with the members was that we were going to go out and talk to people, talk to the community. Yes. So I appreciate when you, know, you naturally just come from you, the fact that, yeah, I would go around my neighborhood and give flyers, of course. Mm -hmm. So hopefully we can sort of imitate that and, and, and do it and just talk to people. Uh, Jamil and Gary, you guys are going to be the ones sort of announce it in city council and in any meeting, public meeting, yeah, you are part of, um, and me and Jamila, we're gonna sort of write the ah. so where we can send it as soon as possible, okay? Yes. I have a question. It says human and social services agencies. So would that be like tapestry, um, ServiceNet, CSO, Center for, um, Center for recovery so center? Um, Center for the Americans, uh, International Language Institute. ILI. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we're gonna we're yeah, gonna. Uh, th there's a list on the second page. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Yeah. If you go okay. Oh yeah, good. There you are. <laughs> yes. there might, uh, I'm sure I didn't capture everyone, so um, yeah, please feel free to add to that list. Perfect. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna sit tomorrow with this list and I'm gonna add all the contact information for this list. So as soon as we have the press release with Jamila, we're gonna just send it out, okay? Good. Excellent. Um, and those who serve in more commissions, such as the Board of Health, uh, in City Council, Housing Authority, myself in the compensate elected officials compensation, we are gonna announce that in those meetings, okay? We're gonna use that platform to be able to announce it. And Gary, you're gonna talk to Monty and Bill Newman about it, so you can you and Jamila or yourself can go on and pontificate about our work. Um, I would love that. So excellent. So we have a plan, Jamila. Let's. Um, so. We are gonna have a organizing meeting. Let's talk, we can talk offline about you and me meeting as chairs uh, to organize a little bit. Okay. Excellent. Uh, uh, River Valley Co-op. Yes. Yes. They have a nice bulletin board out front. Yeah, excellent. Excellent, 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 excellent. Um, excellent. Is it is it possible to share the uh, tentative flyer for folks? Um, I, I I would it, um, I should change the date on that. Yeah, or, I, I just want to just I just want to look at it for you know flyer. I, I sure myself in, totally. Where I look at a lot of flyers. Yeah, Eric, you're not going to be impressed at all. I I'm kind of embarrassed that now you're going to be the one that has to look at this. All right. But... So when let me let me grab the flyer because uh, when share it with me, I can change a couple of things and send it to you, Gary, and send it to everybody. Okay. So, um, can I? Uh, yeah. Okay. Sorry. Go ahead. No. No. Good. Cynthia, thank you for doing this. List. No, that's okay. That's okay. Thank you. Thank you for the opening. I I will. I will send just the other sample flyer that I have, okay. if that's okay with everybody. Absolutely. Just, just as, it, it was pretty yeah. cool. So I'm sure you did a great job too, but I'll just. Oh, uh, you know, good. Yeah. yeah. Is the sample flyer the one that Laura made? Is that the one we determined that Laura you had made? I, who did that? It has a microphone. It says listening session. Yeah, that was a pretty good one. It did do that. I was. I was thinking the image needed to be freshened up a little. If you guys don't mind, I, oh, I, if I could, I did find another image that I thought was a little better that might freshen it a little. If you mean freshen up, freshen, show it to you. freshen up, meaning a USB mic or something like that, rather than a. <laughs> well, when you see I the knew, one that I'm, I, Javier I, is going to show you mine because mine is a little bit depressing compared I knew, to. I knew that Gary books on the last. <laughs> I knew that I was going to lie. Okay, Laura, if you want to share the one that you, you know had I just realized I don't know if I, oh, wait, let me see if I can do it. I'm having trouble sharing because I'm using my home computer and for some reason, it's not so let's, just, let's, let's do something. I can send it out. But. So let's do something. Laura, send me the one that you have. 
I have already went, I'm gonna get Cynthia's and I'm gonna sort of come out with a final version of the three of us. Okay, of okay. That's enough. And that's it. Excellent. Um, one of the things that we're gonna need though, before we send it, it's the official Zoom link that we're gonna be using for the meeting. Okay. So, so that's something that I, I'm gonna talk to you tomorrow, Laura, and see what we can I, do with that. It's easy enough to set up a Zoom meeting and yeah. get the link. And just to come out with the with the, with the because if we're gonna send it out, we need to have sort of the correct information and the accessibility portion of it. Excellent, excellent. So, and Cynthia, you're gonna sort of circulate um, updated document with the dates. Yeah, I just I just did it as we were talking, so I'll send it out right after the meeting. Perfect. Excellent. Great. Excellent. Um, so will we all get the final flyer, and then we could print it out. Right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, and so I want to be thoughtful about people using their own resources to do this. So I may tap Laura and Jim to print things uh, okay. at City Hall. And after that, I can just go and drive and deliver the material to everyone here. Okay. Uh, I'm saying that because the amount of printing material they have gone through because of my work in my house is just crazy i know i know it is, does get kind of ridiculous but i don't i don't i mean you know i don't really print a lot but it would be like i think it'd be like 75 yeah so i i, I can take charge of that and make sort of per packages of with the material for each of them okay um excellent let me see where we're here um we're almost done is there anything that people would like sort of to mention. Now we're gonna go into new business. Is there anything that people would like to mention? Excellent. So um, Jamila, in our chicken, I'm gonna, we're gonna sort of talk about um, the, the press release. Okay. Um, and Laura, I'm gonna touch base with you tomorrow for uh, the Zoom link and probably printing these things in, in City Hall. The only, the only difficult, sometimes I don't have access to a color printer, believe it or not, it's terrible. The only one, the one in the hall, um, I'll have to have, print, get it printed in the mayor's office because it's probably better in color. Okay, thank I mean, you. We'll send yeah. it out. <laughs> we can do the best that we can. Excellent. Um, and tomorrow I'm gonna ser I'm gonna send sort of a, a, a to-do list for all what we have talked here about who is doing what and how we're doing it. And because this is gonna be sort of independent work of each other, we're gonna, we should be fine. Um, excellent. Just remember when somebody sends material to the entire group, it's fine that you reply to that specific person with a thank you or acknowledging receipt. Do not reply all because that creates a massive communication that we should not go into it, okay? And uh, now, so Javier, I just sent you the graphic. Can you project it? Is that, that that's okay, right? Yeah, it's let not... me let me check. Take a look at it. It's gonna Ooh. be the wrong. Uh, let me share screen. I like it. I I I yeah, I like it. I think it's great. Yep. Um I'm gonna I'm going to adjust it so we can have it in one page. Yeah, one page. Excellent. This is, this is the one that you did, Laura? Yeah. Excellent. I love that image. Yeah, it, it is good. Perfect. Excellent. So I'm gonna I'm gonna move things around, change it, but I, yeah, I do think that this is a really good. Excellent. Um, I think we're done for today. If there is no new business, is um, Gary to adjourn then? <laughs> just, just ready oh. to go. <laughs> okay. Uh, so Gary moves a motion to adjourn. Uh, I'm looking for a second. Second. Jamila second. Cynthia third. Uh, Laura? Javier. Yes. Cynthia. Yes. Gwen. Yes. Eric. Yes. And Jamila.
Yeah.